If you've ever wanted to try a backpacking quilt, but looked into them and thought, dang, these are flipping expensive, I have good news for you. Right here on the table in front of me, I have three budget backpacking quilts. And while none of them will be the same as a $400, 900 fill power, goose down, insulated, spun with magical unicorn hair by elves in a forest quilt, they might be just the ticket for you to try a quilt to see if you like it. Let's get into it. What's up, Dirt Junkies? Unless this is the first backpacking gear video you've ever watched, it's likely that you are fully aware of the backpacking quilt craze. I will admit that while I'm a recent convert to quilts, since joining the quilt cult, I have acquired more quilts than I care to admit. And one thing I have noticed, they are expensive. But in the last few months, three budget quilt options have popped up on Amazon. So I purchased all three of them with my own money because I just cannot resist a good budget gear showdown. Some of the really important aspects of quilts are the size, insulation type, and loft, whether the foot box is open or closed, as well as the weight. We will talk about all those aspects of all three of these quilts and more. But first, let me tell you the three quilts we'll be talking about in this video. First up is a quilt from a company called Ayamaya. Next is the One Tigress Featherlight Ultralight quilt. They really want to emphasize how light they think it is. And last is the One Wind Premium XL quilt, which incidentally can also do this. Enough of that, let's talk about these quilts. Ow! <clears throat> okay, let's get back into the quilts. Or out of the quilts. I don't know. Let's talk about these quilts. We'll go through each of the quilts one by one. I'll give you some stats and journal information about them and then tell you my experience in sleeping in them because I have tested all of these quilts in my tent on different sleeping pads to see just how much I like them. First up, the Ayamaya. That's just too fun to say. <clears throat> the Ayamaya quilt. The website description says the Ayamaya weighs in at 3.44 pounds or about 1,560 grams. But when I put it on my scale, I get a weight of 1,520 grams. So very close, actually a little bit lighter than it says on the website description. The temperature rating of the Ayamaya is estimated to be 35 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It's insulated with polyester and it has about two inches of loft. The shell is made of 20D nylon with a DWR coating, which is nice to give it a little bit of water resistance. The Amazon description says that this quilt is 79 inches long and at its widest point, 55 inches wide. I measured myself and I get a length of 75 inches as well as a width of 48. It has three Velcro closures, one right behind your neck and then two down your back. It also has a cinch cord around your neck and the toggle is on the side rather than in the middle, which is really annoying on other quilts, but a Yamaya did it right and put that toggle on the side rather than right in the middle of your face. And on this quilt, the foot box is sewn shut. Now let's talk about my experience in sleeping in the quilt. I slept in this quilt down to about 40 degrees and it kept me plenty warm. I will say that I started the night with none of the Velcro closures closed and as it got a little bit cooler and the temperatures went down from 60 to 50 to 40 Fahrenheit, during the night I would use some of those Velcro closures to help hold the insulation in a little bit better and it worked great. In fact, at about three or four in the morning, I used the cinch cord to make it really tight around my neck and really hold in all of that heat but it worked great down to 40 degrees. No problem with this quilt down to those temperatures. I will say that the Velcro closures were a little bit hard to use. They're just really thin, flimsy Velcro straps that go through plastic loops, and it's easy for those to kind of get sideways and then hard to pull the Velcro through that loop, especially when you're trying to do it behind your neck in the dark in the middle of the night. But all in all, the quilt was very comfortable, kept me warm and worked well. On to the next quilt, which is the One Tigress. You can pick this quilt up on Amazon for $80. It is the Featherlight Ultralight quilt. As I said before, they're clearly trying to drive home the point that they think this quilt is light. Just how light is it? It comes in at 35 ounces, which for a budget quilt isn't bad. It's not insulated with goose down, it's filled with polyester. So you can't really expect a polyester filled quilt or sleeping bag to be much lighter than that. When I weigh it on my scale, it comes out at 1,009 grams or almost an even kilo. That's right at 35 ounces, so the weight on the description matches what I'm getting on my own scale. The Amazon description gives this quilt an estimated temperature range of down to 40 degrees. As I mentioned before, the insulation is polyester and the loft is the lowest of the three at one and a quarter inches. And a quick note about the insulation, the Amazon description actually says at the top that it's filled with down. It is absolutely not filled with down. And if you look further down on the Amazon page, you clearly see that it says it's filled with polyester, which is the same thing that it says on the One Tigers website. I have 
have no idea why the Amazon description says down at the very top, but don't believe it. This is not filled with down, it is filled with polyester. Like the previous quilt, the shell is a 20D nylon, but the description does not say that it has a DWR coating, which is disappointing. I would really expect some type of waterproofing coating on this quilt. The website description for the One Tigers quilt says that it is 79 inches long and just 33 inches wide. I don't know where they got that 33 inch number. When I measure the shoulders, I get a width of just over 50 inches and a length of 75 inches. So I measure just a little bit shorter than the website description, but a lot wider. Similar to the Ayamiya, it does have Velcro closures. I will say that One Tigress does seem to do a much better job with their Velcro closures when compared to the Ayamiya, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. It does also have a cinch cord around your neck with the toggle on the side. I really appreciate that rather than having a toggle in your face all night. And the footbox on the one Tigress is also sewn shut. All right, so what was it like sleeping in the One Tigress Ultralight Featherlight quilt? Similar to the previous quilt, when I went to bed, it was still pretty warm. So I started with all of the Velcro straps open. As the night went on, it got a little bit cooler and it was easier to close these in the middle of the night than the straps and loops on the Ayamiya. And then at about two or three in the morning, I was getting really cold and I cinched the quilt down around my shoulders. I was okay for a little bit and then woke up really cold. It only got down to the low 40s, so it kept me warm down to about 47, 48 degrees, but I don't really think I could take it down much further than that and be comfortable. And it also didn't feel very roomy. I did feel pretty constricted in the One Tigress quilt. So that was my experience in the One Tigress. And the last quilt, the one you've all been waiting for, so you can see more footage of me like this. You're welcome, by the way the One Wind Premium XL Top Quilt. How could it not be premium when you can do this in the quilt? Anyway, you can pick this quilt up on Amazon for about $70. The website description says that this quilt weighs 3.3 pounds, so just about the same weight as the Yamaya, or about 1,500 grams. Let's see what it comes in at on my scale. It's weighing 1,337 grams. The estimated temperature rating of the One Wind quilt is 40 degrees. Again, that's just an estimated temperature rating given to it by the company. We'll talk about my experience sleeping in the quilt in a minute. The insulation is actually made of a really cool material called DuPont Serrano or Serrano, I'm not really sure, but it's an insulation material that's actually made from plant material, which I think is really cool. So the One Wind gets an extra bonus point for sustainability. And the loft of that insulation is about one and a half inches. The shell is made of a 20D nylon and the website description does say that it does have a DWR coating. The dimensions given for the quilt are 85 inches long and 54 inches wide. Now, when I measure it myself with the foot box cinched up, we'll get to the foot box in a minute, I actually get a length of 78 and a half inches, so much shorter than the indicated 85 inches, as well as a width of 55 inches. Now, I think that the reason that the length measurement is so far off is they were likely measuring with the foot box completely open. That's right, the foot box on the one wind quilt is not sewn shut, which means that you have the ability to open it completely like a blanket, or you can close it using the shot cord and there just ends up being a little bit of a hole at the bottom. One thing I do not like about this quilt is that it does not have any type of shot cord or other way to cinch the quilt around your shoulders if it's getting a little bit cold. And while the closure behind your neck is a snap, which is much easier to open and close in the middle of the night in the dark when you're trying to adjust for temperature ranges, there's only one snap right behind your back. There aren't any further down the quilt, which means that you can be left with a quilt that's really staying pretty far open when you'd prefer for it to be more closed to hold more heat in. Also, did I mention that you can do this? Oh, I already mentioned that? Sorry. Let's talk about what it was like sleeping in the One Wind quilt slash puffy coat. I was able to take this one down to the low 40s and it seemed to perform well at those temperatures. As it got cooler during the night, I really found myself wishing that I could cinch it closed around my shoulders and that there were a few more clasps that I could tighten behind my back. As it is, I wouldn't take this sleeping bag any colder than the low 40s, which is the temperature rating that it gives itself, so that seems fair. So there's my experience in sleeping in all three of these quilts. Now I want to show you an overhead shot so that that you can easily see how big they are packed up in their stuff sacks and compare that size. So here you've got all three quilts, the Ayamiya here, one Tigress in the middle, and the one wind over on this side. You can very easily see that the Ayamiya is definitely the biggest of the three quilts. 
that makes sense because it's also the heaviest, but only by a little bit. So the next in size is the One Wind, while the smallest is the One Tigress. And it's probably also worth saying that each of them comes with a pretty nice stuff sack. So with all of that said, which one of these quilts is my favorite? And if you can only get one, which one do I think would be the best to try out? Before I tell you what I think, I would like to know what you guys think. So head to the comments, tell me which one of these three you would choose, and now I'll tell you my thoughts. This is a really difficult decision because there are things that I like about each of the quilts. Probably my favorite thing is from the One Wind, which is this. But there are also things that I don't like about every single one of these quilts. Let me go through them quickly. The Ayamaya is great because it's the warmest of the quilts, but those Velcro straps and loops are really difficult to open and close, especially in the middle of the night. It's also the heaviest at 3.4 pounds or just over a kilo and a half. The One Tigress is fantastic because it is the lightest and the smallest of the three, but it's also definitely the coldest. The Velcro straps were easier to use in the One Tigress than they were in the Ayamaya, but with the temperatures where I'm at, I really won't be able to use this quilt very much except for a few months in the middle of summer. The One Wind quilt was a great middle of the road. It's a little bit lighter than the Ayamaya. I like that it has snap closures instead of Velcro closures, but I don't like that there's not a cinch cord around the shoulders and that there's only one snap behind your back. But if I had to choose one, which would it be? For me, I would have to go with the Ayamaya. It's the warmest, it's got closures all the way down my back, and it cinches up around my shoulders. But as we all know, a quilt or sleeping bag is only part of your sleep system. And I think the most important part might be your sleeping pad, which is why I'll put a link to the video right up here, where I found my absolute favorite three season sleeping pad. Take a look at that video, and remember, life is better with some dirt in it. What's that song? Hanamana. I don't know. Menomena. Menomena. Ayamaya. Menomena. Da da na na na.